गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन लेट मी जस्ट इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ फर्स्ट सो आई एम आलोक श्रीवास्तव डन माई ई पी जी पी फ्रॉम आई एम बैंगलोर इन टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन आई ग्रेजुएटेड इन टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन वेन आई ज्वाइन हैड एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ अराउंड एट ईयर्स इन एन टी पी सी लिमिटेड स्पोज दैट आई ज्वाइन प्राइस वाटर हाउस कूपर्स पी टू सी आई वॉज देयर फॉर फोर ईयर्स देन आई स्टार्टेड दिस फॉर्म कॉल्ड भोग रैकेट विच इज अ platform for connecting mentors and students this we have been doing for last you know two years two two and a half years where uh, you know we are helping students and working professional connect with industry mentors in fact we have been working with almost all the premium uh, b schools including amdavad bangalore calcutta lucknow in the north and almost they are all programs including one year programs like pgpx epgp you know and also two year programs like pgp you know and some other programs as well so uh, why we are doing this right with this session. this session we are doing it because we are we are getting a lot of queries from students prospective students graduates uh, alumni that you know uh, these are the tough times and how and what should we do so this is in that theme uh, you know uh, saptadeep and devakis who are running their own you know uh, youtube channel to drive their passion to help students to to you know help students in their career in their all the queries okay so that's where we started to think that why not we help students and that's where two to tango the youtube channel which is run by sapta and devakis and go cricket collaborated and you know started this uh, series where in this we want to help one year student in this particular session hi this is uh, debashish uh, i am currently work as a vice president in uh, dosha bank and i lead a uh, digitization and uh, analytics practice uh, here for a particular division reference data dosha bank here prior to uh, i am a one year mba from uh, epgp i am bangalore Uh, passed out in 2015 and uh, up post the mba post the one year mba i joined goldman sachs in their operations division uh, was there for about 3 3 and a half years and then moved out, uh, moved out to uh, deutsche bank prior to my one year mba i was uh, in the manufacturing industry i've been in, uh, in a couple of uh, firms uh, primarily related to the steel industry uh that uh, we started off with the uh, sales steel authority of india limited uh, psu then moved on to some of the private firms like siemens and a german firm called sns cmag uh primarily looking after process automation it's been a, it's been an interesting journey and uh, i guess uh, as uh, alok mentioned right we've all gone through this phase that you guys are going through a couple of years prior to us alok went through the same uh, same uh, set- of us set up and uh, we kind of understand that there is a lot of uh, uh, you know thoughts and anxiousness uh, around uh, the things that are happening so we would like to share our experience and maybe hopefully that helps uh, you guys out uh, so over to you for a quick intro hello everyone i hope i am audible so this is uh, satyadeep uh, right now i am working with hsbc uh, as a as a vice president of Transformation for a division corporation that is uh, a global team, uh, roughly 3,500 employees, and uh, we ensure that all your payments reach the right account with the shortest span of time. So, so that's that's what uh, we target and, and provide the best customer experience. Uh, prior to HSBC, I was uh, working for Goldman Sachs. Uh, I started off with core operations. I, I started managing uh, settlements uh, operations in, in the Goldman Sachs and. from there i moved on to uh, you know managing change and transformations within goldman sachs itself uh, i did my one year mba from iim ahmedabad pgpx and and i graduated in 2016 one of the best uh, year of my life and uh, before that i was uh, working with ntpc limited uh, eight years of my life i was uh, a civil engineer i used to design power plants for a living so uh, i think one thing that i would really like to call out is um, around Five years back, I think uh, both of us, me and they, were in the same journey uh, with the same apprehensions. Uh, you know, economy, economic cycles are always there, and I think it's it's an opportune moment where you know we have seen five years of the industry, and it would be good to share our experience. And I think that's why we have uh, 
you know, taken up to this collaboration with GoCracky to reach out to a lot of you people. And at the same time, we have our YouTube channel called Two to Tango, where we share our views not only about like both pre MBA, during MBA, and and what are the success mantras and what you need to do post your MBA. So with that, I'll hand it over back to Dave to start the session. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sapta. So I guess. Uh... As Alok mentioned, right, we've kind of your, your, your questions. We've received almost about 300, 350 questions. Uh, so we've kind of bucketed them uh, across major themes. Uh, uh, what what I'll do is I'll, I'll tell you the themes. So basically, one theme that we've seen a lot about is the economic scenario, the COVID-19 impact on the economy, etc. The other theme is all about the course itself, the study, the certifications, how do you prepare for the placements, etc. And the last, obviously, the, one of the most important uh, uh, themes is about the actual placements. So we'll go uh, one by one. That I'll, I'll pick up the uh, the COVID nineteen economic uh, piece, right? So I think first of all, obviously, you know, it's it's a personal opinion from uh, me and Sapta on this. Uh, obviously, not to be endorsed by any of the companies that uh, we work on. Uh, but coming to the point of economy, see, first of all, let's be honest. It is still nascent times to really fathom the extent of the impact on. The economy that this whole situation uh, unfolded into. It is an imp it's important to understand that because a lot of a lot of companies, a lot of countries, a lot of companies per se are also trying to you know figure out what is the extent of the you know if, uh, to say if it's a damage or it's an impact on their operations, right? So it is very very premature to even say what is going to happen. But to whatever we have seen today. And uh, till uh, till today, I'll tell you. Remember one thing very clearly: when 2008 financial crisis happened, even that year and the subsequent years, people did graduate, and none of them are doing any way badly in their careers, right? These are uh, a bit troubled times. Yes, they are. Uh, you know, it's it's very obvious to have those apprehensions and uh, being anxious about it. But to be honest, there's only certain things that you can ever control. You know. Your own hand. You will always have certain situations. You know, the, even the best of the years, there are industries which do not fare very good. There are companies which do not fare very good. And obviously, this is a time which is kind of a blanket uh, impact across economy. There is a lot of study going on by you know uh, a, a lot of uh, top consultancy firms, etc., uh, which are looking at you know what are the best case scenarios and worst case scenarios. But I still feel that talking about the overall impact of the economy. In the current times, would be very very premature. The chances are, and as most companies are trying to prepare, that people should be able to absorb a lot of uh, uh, you know impact of it by the uh, kind of our economy or brighter kind of an industry uh, impact uh, going on towards into the 2021. Right? Again, uh, we will touch upon in detail about uh, uh, such things in the later themes also. But I think uh, right now. Is you should remember one thing. One, the one year MBA specifically is all about people joining the middle management, you know, middle to senior man management layers in the various companies. Which basically means that these are roles which are very, very specific. And in this case of specific roles, there's a lot that happens even in the best years of economy, right? You you might not have the same companies, you might not have the same uh, type of people joining in, and also there. Trouble times. Everybody is innovating, right? Uh, I, I think uh, folks from Bangalore can uh, can can surely uh, agree to the fact that how companies have innovated just to become grocery delivery companies overnight. Right? There are people, there are leaderships, there are uh, uh, people who are trying to innovate even through those trouble times. And this is exactly where your MBA will come into picture, right? This is exactly the place where. You need to make sure that your MBA teachings are making sure that you are getting to a point where you can breed such innovations in your companies when you get the time for it. Right? And I, I honestly feel this economic scenario would mean that you will have, have a lot of preparation that you can do around the whole areas of you know agile innovation and things of this kind. And that could be your selling point when you actually go in for placements and interviews. Right? I'll pause here. Uh, Sapta, any points that you want to add? Um, yes, I think uh, first of all, uh, you know, thank you for the amazing response. I think uh, you know we, we have got more than 200 people who have registered. We are we are sorry that uh, you know currently we can accommodate only 100, uh, but then hopefully 
you know we we can do a later session and uh, we'll definitely record uh, the session and put it up in our youtube channel now going back to the economy i think uh, first of all there were a lot of questions that has been asked to us regarding considering covid what are the companies we can expect at campus i think to be honest uh, these are open ended questions we are not fortune tellers and you know uh, you know all of you like going to to your mba needs to be specific on uh, what we are looking to um uh, secondly i think it's very important that this is a very evolving scenario so it's very difficult to quantify and the scenario itself is very unique in nature for example they spoke about 2008 but even in 2008 uh, you know your supply was not impacted the demand was impacted but right now it, it, it's a situation where both supply and demand is impacted so the money circulation in the, in the economy itself is going to come down so will there be an impact the answer it is yes I, that's the short answer there will be a ripple down effect in all sectors all industries however what's important for us is to, is to understand what is the worst case and the best case scenario and i'll start off with the best case first um as so mckinsey reported which uh, you know i i i want all of you to kind of download it is in their home page uh, the best case scenario is that the economy will stabilize by the quarter four of 2020 um the covid would be eliminated in india in the next couple of and so so somewhere around uh, there will be a lot of financial stimulus that will come from the government worldwide to kind of create a demand you know as of now an artificial kind of a demand so there will be certain industries so certain sectors such as healthcare infrastructure telecom uh, manufacturing finance to a certain extent but the government has a lot of control will try to bounce back earlier however my prediction is uh, industries or, or sectors such as it services uh, consulting fmcg logistics real estate e-commerce are going to be impacted because of the because of the longish nature of the supply chain now considering most of the jobs that that come into one that campus is at it and you know if you can think it's around like 50% or um, i think there will be a definite impact in place however you know if if india kind of bounces back earlier than europe and us which which kind of looks is as the government is taken uh, the bounce back should be swift and and there can land which can come up right when the placement starts so so one of the example which i read in the newspaper today is that the japanese government is giving a 2.2 billion incentive to their private organizations to move business out of china now uh, the diplomatic stance that india has taken to supply medicines you know uh, covid brazil uh, help brazil because i think that would help us create some amount of leverage and hopefully if the economy bounces back by q4 then would definitely be a need of management leaders in the organization because everyone wants to bounce back and capture the the suppressed demand in the market as soon as possible however what i would suggest even in the best case scenario it's very important to be flexible in your outgoing salaries or 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 in the nature of your roles that you're going to expect because this would be difficult times now the worst case the worst case is that again as per mckinsey uh, the economy will come back by 2022 quarter 3 is where it will return to the pre covid level if it happens like that i think it will create havoc for everyone not only for you but us who are, who are giving you advice on this call and i think you know we while while the impact would be large we don't expect all the industries to be muted you know there will be suppress demand cycle in some but then there will be consumptions in certain industries however my advice for that would be to keep a buffer savings of 3 to 6 months post your mba such that any such scenarios you can sail through and and history i think over the past uh, uh, 10 12 years of pgpa that i have been following at uh, three months down the course everyone gets employed with a good job so ensure you keep a buffer of three months and i'll suggest you know go for six months uh, to ensure you you take care of any adverse scenarios lastly as they pointed out i think every year will bring its own unique challenges you know remember it's very important that why to understand why we why we chose to do an mba in the first place all of us were doing you know jobs were comfortable i think besides the placement i think what's important is all of us realize that you know the in the current construct we can actually do more we have the skills and the capabilities that we, if we can get some education we should be able to emerge as business leaders and 
testing times and, and business leaders only emerge during testing time. So I think this is a very important step for all of you to kind of prove yourself during the difficult times. Uh, one of the questions that uh, came to us is what is the value of the course? Uh, you know, specifically PGPX, is someone asked, is in today's scenario. I think the short answer is this, that IMA has survived for 60 years and, and it has multiple downturns over the 60 years. But the value of the institute has always went up, particularly because it's people like us who have been able to lead organizations during such difficult times. And I think that is what is important. So, and that is what the skill that this education gives us. That is what the skill that this education prepares us for. So, what's important is you consider the MBA to be a long term investment. You know, keep your savings, don't spend your provident fund away. You know, a mistake a lot of us does. Uh, you know, people go to IIP. I was one of those. You know, don't spend your PF away. It's, it's important. And be flexible with your choices at this point and focus on building skills to work in the new normal of the future. Uh, I think with that, uh, you know, we have kind of covered the theme of economy. Uh, any questions that you have would love to take it. Um, I, I think someone uh, put up a question around my transition from power sector to banking. I think that is something we will take up uh, in the future theme. But anything around economy that you would like to ask us, you know, you can unmute yourself, ask a question, or you can put it in the chat window. We'll, we'll give 30 seconds. Any questions regarding the economy yeah. or any, any concerns? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I had a question. So uh, I think one of the uh, participants might have also asked is with the banking domain, right? You guys associated with the banking domain. Um, how are you seeing the, 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 the challenges there? Because I believe um, all the one-year courses, there are a lot, a lot of that get placed in banking domain. So what's your study about the banking domain, given you're closely associated with it? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably take that and uh, sub sufficient where you need to. Uh, I, I guess one thing you need to understand is, uh, I, I guess this was Mohit, right? Uh, so one thing you need to understand, when you talk about finance as a domain, yes, a lot of people do get uh, placed in the sector of financial services, but not everybody is doing finance. It's, it's an important fact. Because they each end up joining would not be core finance. Like for example, Saptadeep, both of us joined the operations division in the in, in Goldman Sachs, which is obviously one of the uh, best financial services company investment bank in the world. But we end up joining to understand is that the ramifications of what happens in the market also is determined by how much front facing roles you actually have right you know it's, it's basically saying uh, if the fncd is impacted the frontline sales guy gets impacted first as, as compared to the manufacturing guy because obviously it takes time the ripple effects of the impact of the ma marketing and economy it's time to, to reach uh, is far lesser as compared to number of people joining operations and in a way how much of a bad economy becomes the time that it takes to impact the operations will be much higher as compared to what it takes uh, to impact the front office uh, kind of thing because obviously they have a relation uh, directly with the market right so whatever is happening in the market today covid etc right now i don't think there are any uh, immediate negative impacts the companies are good enough especially with uh, post the financial uh, crisis in 2008 a lot of companies have bolstered their uh, you know uh, their balance sheets as well as you know whatever is required make sure that they can handle such scenarios right so it, it's not yet reached to that level uh, especially at the operations level and i will i will add something to it i think it's it's very important that all of the organizations uh, are, are trying to change the strategy basis, the evolving scenario. As I said, the situation is evolving. The world has not seen something like this before. So, uh, you know, uh, one of the stated objectives by my current company is to look east, you know, for, for some other company to do something different. However, what's important to understand is, as, as Dave mentioned, that not everyone does finance, you know, uh, there's operations. And for example, me and they were part of operations. 
we will we are going to see how what is impacted in the new normal of working home. So you will see automation, data analytics, you know, uh, booming up because people would like to know, like you know, in the current scenario, how can technology support? Uh, take a this is again my my is you know your your real estate or or for example um, the, the the whole facility management industry where there is a lot of investment today we might see that you know people you know organizations take a step that we don't need like x amount of offices across the world so i think we there would be opportunities like every scenario will bring good opportunity as well as you know the difficulties part and we need to focus on the opportunity that's what this education kind of gives us you know the class participation should improve more i mean that's that's something you you learn as soon as you you join the campuses uh, so we would expect a lot more questions when we touch upon the next part which is uh, study certifications and placement preparation that is that is our next team where we had a lot of questions um, and I'll, I'll start off with one of the key questions i think someone had asked how much are academics in mba important well i think uh, it is the most important thing, period. Like people come to IIMs and ISBs for the rigor of the academic. Uh, you know, and uh, if you're purely looking for a job, my advice would be to spend a small fraction of that money on a recruitment consulting firm. That would probably give you a much better ROI. Since you are, you know, investing a, a year, investing a good amount of money to go uh, to do an MBA from IIMs and ISBs, kindly treat it as important. And, and treat academics as placements separately. Remember, and, and this is what we will come back to again and again, that MBA is a long-term investment. Now, there was uh, another set of concerns that came up again and again is the online methodology of the first term. So, so I think I am, uh, I am Ahmedabad, if I'm not wrong, uh, I've already thought about doing the first term online. I mean, that's, that's what uh, folks told me. Now, my view on it is that the world needs to gear towards a new normal of virtual management. Now, since the day I joined change management uh, in Goldman Sachs and now in HSBC, uh, I have managed transformation virtually. Like my team, my stakeholders, my IT were all spread across the globe. And coming from a background of our industry, you know, we always knew working in an office. I, I can never imagine uh, not going to an office and work. So for me, it was a good learning and for me, it was a good challenge. You know, it, it brought a, a lot of new skill sets into me. So definitely, I, it's important provided your college and the peer group is prepared for that. If you find a peer group which does not participate because it's a virtual uh, class which does not engage, because you as a batch will lose out. So it's important to take advantage of the scenario because that's what the future is. And, and it's very important for people from manufacturing infrastructure sectors. We have been working, I haven't never worked working from home like uh, before my MBA. It's very important. Take it as a blessing in disguise. Secondly, I think on certification, now what I like to call out at the start, uh, no education harms. My take on certification is that it always helps if you have a direction on where you want to land. Now, for an example, you know, all of us are doing an MBA because we want to signal to the market that we have a skill set which is better than uh, you know uh, the, the rest of the world and we can thrive in a competitive environment of management now um, if you are now looking for a pure it product management role and then this is depending on your interest you would prefer a course on aws or azure or or gcp because it will never hurt in fact it will give a signaling to your recruiters that you know, this particular individual is actually interested in this particular domain. So it works as a signaling effect. Ditto for project managers, you know, who would like to go into a say IT project management role, get certified in agile because uh, right now you don't see waterfall project management anywhere. Similarly for analytics folks, you, you know, you can learn a data data basics or you can have a tool based skill such as an Altplex or a Tableau, which can help you stand out during the initial days. Remember, any organizations during the initial days, you have to grind like an analyst. So you know, knowing the basics of certain tools will always help you. So my view would be to do specific certifications. And remember, the, the stress is, is in the word specific. So specific certifications, which would help you signal to the recruiters what you want to target. 
However, personally, I am not a not a huge fan of general certifications such as a PMP because your MBA is sufficient to cover for that. You know, so focus on something specific that that it really signals your recruiters that this this particular person is focused in a particular direction, right? And more than anything else, and and this is my view of five years into the industry. If there is one thing that you want to learn out of your MBA. It's 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 important to learn how to work hard. You know, you getting admitted into the course has already proved that you are smart enough. But learn learning to working hard is probably the biggest learning you will take away from this course, and that's why the rigor of this course is so very important. And and you know, again, coming back to the first point, that is why academics and MBA is important because that is what you take back. Dave, do you want to add to it? Yeah. Surely, I I, th- I think couple of points and uh, Sapta just adding to one of the points of certifications that you said, right, guys. One thing is important. You should understand that you are joining an MBA in one of the most prestigious colleges of this country, which means that all of these colleges are focused on the academics of you know the various subjects that they teach, which also means that the whole purpose of their teaching is a lot on. On the theory and the fundamentals of those particular areas, you know, be be it be finance, be it uh, product management, whatever it is, they are trying to give you the fundamentals, the theoretical fundamentals, and obviously top it up with case studies, etc., so that you get a flavor of the real life uh, situations. The certifications are specific skills, as Sapta clearly mentioned, right? These are specific skills, and remember one thing: certifications will help you in a point in time. You can. You can you cannot do a certification in end to end thing, right? You could do it at a point, maybe three years down the line, that technology or that particular methodology does not even exist, and you've seen how things have been changing. So remember that that the certifications are a very important way to signal the recruiter that I have the particular skill, and that skill has to be relevant for that point in time as well as that point in time for that recruiter, right? So pick up in case you are doing it. One thing I would say, and this is my personal thought, please refrain from doing. Very elaborate certifications or very elaborate online uh, courses. No, PMP is one way. It 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 will absorb too much of your time and not serve any purpose. A lot of people, you know, especially who want to get into uh, finance, they want to do FRM, right? The financial risk management uh, uh, course. Again, you should know. Remember one thing: your MBA itself is going to be very, very emotionally and physically draining. Please ensure that you get the best out of the MBA rather than you know divert. Justifying your energy beyond what you can re- literally absorb. So, certifications for specific skills for specific knowledge always help. Broadened uh, specifications, I uh, don't uh, certifications. I don't think will actually benefit you a lot. And I think uh, as an offshoot of you know how the course and uh, how the certifications etc will go, there's a lot of questions that came up in terms of placement preparation, right? So I'll, we, we we'll try to. You know, link all these through uh, these uh, three uh, through, so that you know you can at least have an idea of uh, how to link them back. So again, very very important, very very important that you have the right signaling effect, right? So remember this word. I am telling you, we've seen it from our experience. People want to jump roles, people want to jump industries, people want to do a certain particular role, but their signaling is absolutely half a second, and. You should remember one thing: it is not the recruiter's job to find the skill in you that fits into his role or the the opening that he has. It is your responsibility to make sure that you make the recruiter believe that you have that skill which fits into the role that he is looking uh, out for. Right? There is a lot of people we 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 kind of talk to a lot of people uh, during their placement interview preparations, etc. And a lot of people I've seen. Who who do not you know who who basically want the recruiter to figure that out right so that is that is very 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 important don't put that pressure on the recruit now that basically means and one particular thing and I'll pick up a few of the questions also that came up so that we can answer during our uh, you know uh, while we are speaking one of the questions and this specially comes out from the people coming from core sector manufacturing sector power steel etc and me and Sapta both come from that sector so we can relate to that. first i want to be very very open and clear people from manufacturing and core sector are not second grade citizens and i am telling you that 99% of the people start feeling that way because 
for some reason we coming from manufacturing and, uh, and uh, you know core sectors we feel that okay we've not lived that corporate life we've not lived those you know the high technology domain uh, kind of an areas and hence uh, how will a recruiter uh, relate to it well first of all me and sapta both were able to crack that code and we've been able to get into a completely different uh, organization and we've not done something out of the blue and i'll tell you a very simple thing the most important part of a placement preparation is how how do you learn to translate your existing experience to something that is relatable to a recruiter and i'll give you a real life example when i was being interviewed by uh, goldman sachs and i'm sure satra would agree to that when we, we were being recruited by goldman sachs if i was to explain steel manufacturing to a person in goldman sachs or satra was to explain civil engineering to goldman sachs i'm sure we, none of us would have ever cracked uh, the interviews the idea here is is there something in my experience that i can translate to something which a person sitting in goldman sachs or any of the financial service sectors or any other sector can relate to and it needn't be 100% 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 you need to build a story around it right another bigger point is that a lot of people start preparing for their placements only when the placement season starts that is absolutely wrong because at the crux of the moment those will be the times when you will have probably the fourth uh, uh, semester running you will have electives you will have projects you will have everything and you will have the placement preparation please your placement preparation starts from the day you join the course how does that come into picture that comes into picture by making sure that you are trying to create that story for yourself day every day day in and day out you're trying to create the story that then would be able to match to what the recruiter is looking for right so again an important part of your placement preparation we've already talked about a uh, lot about the signaling effect uh, i think one of the questions that came up uh, you know uh, as part of the course etc is about excel whether we like it or not how much ever technology advanced we are excel still is a bread and butter kind of a tool for each one of us and be serious a lot of us are not at the best of our excel skills let's be let's acknowledge that uh, different sectors different people control c control v is not the best of the excel skills i there is no harm in getting that excel skills and there is plethora of opportunities to do that you can go watch youtube videos you can uh, go through free certifications you have edx you have udemy there are thousands of ways i'm sure excel is something where you don't need somebody teaching you you can happily go ahead and do it but i would suggest please do that that will not just benefit you in your mba but also post mba right so i think uh, i hope i answered that excel specific question uh I let me just go uh yeah yeah sapta go ahead go ahead no no i think there is a question around uh, since we're taking a question there is a question around the uh, rps certification or, or you know uh, i think i think you know both me and dev we kind of manage rpa within our respective organizations are we certified in rpa the answer is no are we expected to get certified the answer is again no. we are expected to manage a team of rpa consultants we are expected to manage change we are expected to manage transformation till the point we understand what is the what what is the current scenario what is the target where we want to take it and what is the gap you know till the point we can clearly articulate that and understand to bridge that gap what is the right technology basis the experts that we have within the organization i think you are good you will be more than successful so you know A, a, a certificate again having said that any skill is not bad skill you know if you have time please go ahead but then you are not expected to do an rpa coding in an organization that should that won't be the expectation so that's one um another question that came up uh, is how should candidates uh, highlight the certifications and the academic knowledge to recruiters i think this this answer, this uh, question is very beautifully answered by the your preparation starts from day 0 you join the course um you know you have to start creating your story uh, in which you kind of have an understanding of what is the kind of role you want to target you know i i won't go to a specificity of industry because uh, you know that that piece of trouble for example when i uh, you know came from a power industry to do my mba did, to, did i know that financial industry was where i wanted to land no But I knew that project management was a skill set. That is what I did in NTPC. So 
So I knew that that is where I want to learn. Okay, so you kind of need to start creating a story for yourself, which is strong enough to get the recruiter convinced that for that particular industry, for that particular role, your experience kind of fits best. Mind it, you know, this is a middle management recruitment. So all of us will be handpicked for a particular role, you know. So all your certifications, all your academic knowledge, all your electives, you kind of give that holistic story to the recruiter and that signal to the recruiter of where you want to land. I think that is most important. Uh, Dave, do you want to take any other questions? Yeah, I think one of the questions is about, uh, you know, how should one decide on the elective courses? Uh, I think it's, 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 a, it's a sum of uh, what uh, we've been telling about the signaling effect. See, the way, the way I look at it, electives is there are two ways. And remember one thing, you cannot be an ex expert in a particular field just because you took an elective. And, and it would, it would just know that. But that does not mean that the electives are of no use. The electives give you that directional start that you need for a particular area. See, let, let me be honest. And I, again saying, this could be a very generic statement, but uh, let's be honest. It is probably impossible for you as an engineer to become a doctor overnight, right? And a lot of people end up trying to take electives to become a doctor when their background is in being an engineer, right? Now, 1% maybe that's possible, but in a generic thing, that does not uh, hold good. What is important, and I'll connect to what Sapta said, right? You need to understand that we did not become RPA certificate, uh, you know, certified uh, resources, but we all, we both handle RPA because we are able to work at the upper layer of 36,000 feet on the strategy, right? Now, when I'm doing an RPA and I'm running, an, uh, say, a data analytics uh, team or uh, Sapta is running an RPA team, I'm neither coding for uh, uh, RPA or whatever, but what I'm doing is I'm doing cost benefit analysis. I'm doing a lot of strategy. I'm trying to do the financial impact of that. Now, when you translate all of these into courses, your courses should be probably finance. Your courses should be strategy. Your courses could be product management. Now you see how those elective courses and my actual work in the operations in a financial sector are not directly related, but they eventually come into place. So what I will suggest is that whatever you're trying to do, you know, as your future goal, whether you want to get into strategy or whatever, you know, I you know we'll come to strategy. That's like the most talked of word. But whatever you want to do, make sure that your electives give you a thematic experience of what your overall experiences would be, right? And then that is that is where you actually grow into that. Yeah. So make sure you remember that you are going to be a manager. You are studying management. I think that's that's important. So you have to manage a scenario, whether it is a technology scenario, whether it's a it's, it's a human resource scenario, and you can't be skilled in all of those respective details. You have to understand the basics of management. That's what this course will give you. And the reason I brought that up is there's a question uh, coming from uh, you know please answer what skill to learn from core sector. I think the key, the skills to learn, whether it's from core sector or non-core sector, is the same. If you have to learn something, you have to learn how to work hard. And, and this is something, you know, I'll, I'll keep on beating because this is important. This is something we don't learn really well. I think secondly, you also need to understand that it what is the role you want to target will define what is the skill set you want to build. For example, if you are uh, say want to try for a, a kind of a sales role, right? So what is expected from a sales role is you would be good in communication. You would be good in, you know, engaging with the client, it's converting leads. You should be good in persevering. You know, these are qualities. And if you have these basic qualities, these basic skill sets, uh, an organization can teach you if it is an IT sales, they can teach you that bit of IT so that you can go and speak because essentially you have to create a lead and then you will take an expert with you who will sell the core value proposition of the product. Similar for operations. If you are looking for an operation show, the, tools, the key skill set you need to be is to understand processes, understand team management, understand, you know, gap analysis, uh, you know, quality assurance. These are the key skill sets that you need to bridge, you need to kind of inculcate within you and irrespective of the sector you land up to, whether it is manufacturing or financial services, you know, that core skill set of a project management will kind of remain the same. So these are all transferable skill sets 
and you know even being in a core sector such as ntpc i have learned these skill sets uh, in my job now there is a question on strategic consulting i'll i'll take it up later because we want to cover uh, another important theme that has come up to us which is around uh, kind of placement modalities and then placements so i think what's important uh, is that if the system ain't broke we should not kind of reinvent it you know the system in broke today so for 10 years all the iims all the isps has been able to place close to 100% um, of uh, their incoming students with with good salaries uh, i think you know if i talk about iims it's like 20 to 23 is the average in the last i knew so i think these are good numbers so the system definitely in broke but considering the current scenario yes the system would need some tweak i think that is important so Uh, what kind of tweaks we can look to do and and i think someone came up with a very interesting question that um you know if you have to design the placement strategy during the current times what would you do so one i won't change the system because the system involves a lot of cold calling to your recruiters you know putting in a lot of hard time to kind of understand where each uh, student wants to go into which industry and and look into those companies so that basic will always remain i think what what's important or what additional we need to do out there is one we need to ensure your college becomes accountable for your career so something we don't do often and we don't do often well is to utilize our college resources to the maximum and when i say college resources it would be your professors it would be your alumni it would be your uh, you know industry connect within the organization it would be the pgp batch all of this all of this resources needs to be utilized you have to make them accountable you have to be focused you know create a lot of industry connect because right now more than ever you would need the industry to know that these are fantastic bunch of people out here you know they understand the industry they have the business sense so to make the industry understand you have to bring the industry home you have to bring your alumni home into your college so i think that is important so overall system does not need change but but there there has to be much more effort that has to be put in there secondly i think uh, on placements and we have also if, uh, you know some of you have seen our youtube videos we have called out that every mba course or one year mba course we come with a lot of baggage you know uh, for example uh, if if i'm a woman i'm married i have a child my husband works in say pune i would like to have a job in pune and which essentially means my my flexibility kind of reduces so every remember the placement is a combination of the location you want to go the role you want to target the salary you want to get now nothing can be like better if you can you know get everything out of it but considering the scenario considering what we have seen it's important to be flexible you need to know among these three parameters what means the most to you and based on what means the most to you you should be ready to kind of adjust to the other two parameters and considering the current times this is even more important lastly i think what you need to know is all job is about fitment so the key word out here is fitment and i think we have touched it before itself it's important to understand from a perspective of a recruiter what is it that they are looking for as i said if if it is a sales job they are looking for certain characteristics if it is an operation they are looking for certain characteristics you need to understand whether your key character fits into that and then you do your electives you do your uh, you know certifications around that to make to do that signaling to the recruiter that you know what my holistic story fits into the role that you are looking for i think that is important and i think there is question around consulting and you know i probably you know based on my experience and my experience is kind of limited to i am ahmedabad consulting hasn't been great in pgpx i am ahmedabad period um, you know and there's a reason behind it one is that it the, the cohort that we are we are a cohort of around uh, you know average experience of 10 years i think that has reduced now maybe uh, you know 8 8 and half but in consulting at the age of 35 people become partners right and 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 i'm talking about the big consulting firms and you know when they become partners they have the necessary contacts in the industry you know you are supposed to get 
jobs, you must, for example, get projects for your firm. Now, suddenly someone who is not from the industry, you know, uh, not from, until someone, for example, works for government tendering and a consulting firm is looking for government advisor. That's a completely different story. But I'm purely talking about general consulting, the McKinsey, BCG types of general management consulting. You know, it's very difficult uh, for people, for the cohort like us to break through that. And it does not mean, you know, uh, you know, they are looking for higher skill sets. We don't have the skill sets. No, it goes down to the fact of treatment. Do we fit out there or not? The, the probable answer, and this is my take on it, is no. Because the skill sets we're looking at is very different than the skill sets we did uh, into the particular course. Um, so, Dave, do you want to take up any questions? We have some questions coming up. Yes, yes, chat. absolutely. I think, I think a couple of points, uh, we, there were a couple of questions back from uh, uh, certifications, and I think Sapta and we kind of clearly mentioned, uh, talked about that certification is all about signaling. Right. Uh, obviously, you don't want to do a certification which you can't explain. Uh, so, if you can explain a certification, go ahead and do that. Right. So, uh, again, don't don't let certifications eat up your too much of your time because that's not not your purpose of doing an MBA. Coming back to the placement scenario, I think one thing I just want to add, uh, Sapta, I think uh, beautifully put it about you know the balance between role, salary, and location, and uh, you don't always get uh, all three uh, kind of um, your expectations met so be sure uh, especially in, in in times which are not which are the new normal you might have to think about one specific area where you want to focus it is back to the same point of stating that this mba is not a short term roi it is not a short term roi a short term roi could be a placement agency you just you spend 2 lakh rupees and you'll get the job that you want this is a long term roi so please do not look at it this second thing i just wanted to call out is that remember one thing how much ever we don't like that, that word you guys need to be selfish you guys need to be selfish in terms of you remember one thing you are one person and there is one job for you unless you are 100 percent prepared for that job you'll never get it and especially at a time when the competition increases and the number of available it's a supply demand uh, scenario right you got to be selfish and the reason i say selfish is because then you will prepare to the best potential possible that you have right you will utilize all you connect properly you will make sure that you know you are your direction towards from right from the day one is is proper you connect into the right alumni now connecting to alumni does not mean asking for a job i think that's the that's the most that's the last thing that you want to do connecting to the alumni means to understand what is the scenario what are the skills required do i fit there is there even a logical transition for me from doing x to y Right, and that those are the experience that you want to get from them. Right, as Sarata kind of mentioned about strategy consulting. Again, I think since I joined, I we did our MBA five years since then. That's one question that has always been there. I I, I think it's come to a point where everybody wants to do MBA one year MBA just to enter into McKinsey's, BCG's, and Bates. Well, it's great. It's great to work there, of course, there. But please make sure that you understand what are the rigors of being into strategy consulting. And I can tell you, if you reach out to alumni who are working in not just McKinsey's, etc., in tier two consulting, uh, even at Deloitte and ENYs, etc., you will understand the rigors. For some, it's great. For some, it might just be a dream, but you won't want to live that life. So please be very open. Strategy consulting. Consulting, McKinsey's and Bain's is not the end of an MBA, uh, you know, uh, life. There is a lot more that can be done, right? So just make sure that uh, you know is kept in mind. One question that has come uh, from uh, you know uh, from I think Abhishek, which is, uh, does the one-year MBA at IIMs allow networking opportunities with uh, PGP seniors? Again, there is nowhere is written that you cannot uh, you know have networking with any of the PGPs or any. For that matter, anybody who passes out from your MBA college is your alumni, right? So, how and for what you reach out to makes a lot of difference, right? Uh, now, again, one more thing I wanted to say see, the reason why PGP is considered even today as a flagship course because the course has existed for so many years. I am Bangalore, which is still the, you know, uh, our, between ABC, it's the one that started in the 1970s. I think celebrated its, what, 41st or 42nd convocation day. 
convocation a couple of years back. Ahmedabad would be even more. Calcutta would be something similar. So you have 40 years of seniors uh, there. So it's automatically that you will find uh, people very senior in very senior jobs, CEOs, etc., who will be PGPs. One year MBA started in, in this country only 10 years back, probably. So if you, your, your seniors might still not have reached those very senior levels. So first of all, nothing stops you from networking with PGPs, seniors, uh, PGP batchmates and all, anything. Please go ahead, do that. But again, don't network for jobs. Don't network that I need a job, right? You network for your experience, your understanding, your what is happening in the industry. Do I fit it? How do I ensure that I, it's, 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 a, it has, to be a mutual handshake it cannot be i hold your hand and it's just cling to it right so that is going to be i think i want to again i think uh, and, and there's a very very nice story around networking that i personally experienced so um, when i was recruited for goldman sachs uh, i really connected with uh, one of my college alums who came to the campus um, he made me understand about the job and eventually you know i, I made it and i joined uh, and I was completely not prepared for that, you know, and that's why I keep on harping that why hard work is important. I was not prepared for hard work. And that took a toll on my personal life. Uh, you know, I was spending 16 hours in office. I was doing something that I was completely new to. Finance, I had no clue. And it was difficult to a point where I thought, like, you know, it does not make sense to me. I, I probably want to go back to the core industry. And, you know, this particular individual, uh, you know, he became a uh, my mentor in uh, the in Goldman, and I reached out to him. I said, you know, it's not making sense to me. I'm, I'm probably get tired out of this. And he said that you know what, you you come from a management education. You are you are I am Ahmedabad. You should you should look into delivering change, delivering transformation. That's what you are good at. That's what you know you have probably done in a project management in NTPC. And he ensured that I move from my role in operations to a transformation role. You know, and it has completely changed the career trajectory for me. Uh, and this is how networking helped. It does. He did not get me a job, but he gave me the same advice that helped me really leap ahead in my career. And now that particular individual is no more in Goldman. He moved out to a different firm. And then he recommended that you know this is a great guy. When when a when a fantastic role opened up in HSBC, he recommended to someone in HSBC that this is a fantastic fellow. I think you can you should look look at him. He is really good to kind of do such a kind of a role and uh, you know I, I was there in HSBC you know, and it has been one year of fantastic journey so you know if you look at the summary of it I never reached out for a job what I did in the meanwhile is I helped him with a lot of his projects uh, I helped him with a lot of uh, you know his uh, small pet projects within the organizations and in the meanwhile he gave me a lot of same advice that has helped me in my career so networking like in short, is a is a game of give and take. It cannot be give only. It cannot be take only. And that is what you need. Yeah, watch. I think that's, um, that's a very valid point. I think. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, uh, just taking the cue from what you said, right? Uh, I think one thing we've 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 often discussed and we've talked a lot about in our uh, two to tango videos also. Remember one thing, guys. The first job that you get out of your MBA is not the final job that you will end up retiring from, right? What you need to make sure is that your first job is in the right direction towards where you want to end up being. Did me and Sapta think about joining operations in Goldman Sachs? Maybe not, right? Did I want to get into data analytics? Yes. Did I end up being in data analytics? Yes, I am leading that team, right? Am I an expert of, on, on all the data analytics tools? Of course not. I, I run the team. I, I, I build strategy for my division for data analytics. What is and how and how it's very important to understand how all this, this has happened and how Sapta told his story about you know how he there was a give and take he reached out mentored got mentored with an alumni closely worked with him and slowly got in we see where he's probably uh, doing something as a program manager you know at a much senior level very similar story for me I'll not uh, delve deeper into it but the point here is that one your first job is not the final job so it has to be a directional shift from where you want to be, it will not happen 90% of the time that you will end up in the exact same job industry role that you want it to be. No, it will not happen. Again, remember one thing, your one year MBA, and let's stop talking it as a one year MBA, it's now officially called an MBA, so let's talk it as an MBA. Your MBA from IAM will land you a foot on the door. 
what you do after that is purely what you've learned and how best you can utilize that knowledge right and often people think that me just joining an IIM Bangalore or IIM uh, Ahmedabad or any of those uh, prestigious colleges will end up, you know, leading me to become a CEO. Of course not. It doesn't matter. You know, once your foot is landed on, on the door, probably people won't even question that you know you come from IIM. There'll be many things which people will already expect from you because right. So it is important for you to ensure that you are making the best out of it, right? And uh, I just want to pick up this. I think one specific question that. Uh, you know, talking about there's a lot of buzz around ML and AI and how important it is to have this. See, again, it boils down to the same question, the same answer that we gave earlier, right? Signaling effect. What do you want to do about ML and AI, right? You want to increase your general knowledge? Go ahead, no problems. You want to become an ML AI expert? Well, you need to think about it. How does it fit to the roles that you want to do, right? Now, today, I, when I run a data analytics team, it makes a lot of sense for me to know about ML and AI and how I can make sure that my people that I recruit are expert in some of those uh, some of those areas so that I can implement some of those things. So do I need knowledge? Yes. Do I need to know code an MLAI algorithm? Maybe not, right? So I'll pause. I know we are almost on time. Do uh, you want to open up for questions or any specific questions around yeah. that? Or Tata? I think, you know, uh, we will, I think we are, we are almost out of time. So. I think rather than questions, um, and, and in fact, there are questions more than happy to answer them in a similar form or you know, through our videos or emails, you know, let us know and we are approachable. But want to take like quick two minutes to hear from all of you. Did you find this session helpful? You know, that, that would, uh, you know, help us understand that something like this, uh, you know, really helps and something that we do going forward. So, you know, if anyone would like to come up and uh, you know, let us know how they experienced this particular session. That we yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, while we uh, basically, uh, you know, wrap this up, uh, you know, we are all available on LinkedIn and uh, Alok, I think he's been doing a great job with his uh, Go Crack It platform. Uh, we are trying to help out as much uh, possible through our two to tango videos. So please make sure you subscribe to those videos. We are obviously selling ourselves. So uh, make sure that, you know, uh, you subscribe to those videos. We can uh, you know, reach out to us on LinkedIn, etc. And, uh, you know, we are more than happy to, uh, you know, answer any of your questions around. Uh, Alok, over to you. Uh, I know you've been patiently listening to a lot, to, to, to a lot from both of us. So over to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's the power of, uh, you know, uh, you talk about a lot of things. And one of the things, if I have to really pick up, you know, is what uh, Sapta said and uh, that, you know, about networking that, you know, what, uh, how this is one of the best strategy, I would say, uh, is to, you know, really connect with and, uh, you know, mentors and industry experts to understand what is happening. That is one and maybe also figure out what you can help them on. I just give you one example of what we, why did when I was in MBA, I did a project with Apollo Hospital. Okay, as an analytics project because I didn't have any. I mean, in fact, if you you know really, you'll be surprised to know that I didn't know what analytics is. Why I joined the MBA and I did a, a analytics project in in I am Bangalore to you know really get that exposure of what an analytics is, what could be a consulting, you know, all those things. And in fact, later on we published that as a case study in Harvard Business Review. And in fact, some of you guys might be reading studying that as well in some point of time in your analytics courses. So what I'm trying to say is networking and doing things which are which you think you are interested in and you can get some, you know, you can give some signals. This is the best opportunity. And no matter what you say, as, as Devasi said, that you know, even if you are in a premium, most premium school, you need to make your ways to corporate and incorporate people understand what you're impacting. They see what you're resulting rather than your profile. Profile is a foot and door, I agree. That's a huge door opener, but that's that also increases the uh, expectation from you. I mean, on the first day in PwC, I was being interviewed by uh, a client. So you can see that how much expectation people have from you. So don't, uh, you know, so work on that. Be very clear on what you want to do. Do network. I mean, that's the best strategy. And I really thank uh, Devashi Saptadev. It's very powerful session and it's very motivating. I mean, that is what. I think more importantly than, you know, I mean, logic and facts and figures you can get, but the motivation you will only get from the people who have been there, done that. I think thanks, Devashi, Sapta, and 
most importantly one more thing i really want to point out that these guys are you know following their passion of helping students and that is the most important thing you'll get out of mba you know you do whatever you want to do i'm, I'm sure that there are some short term consideration which you have to take but eventually you will be successful when you follow your passion and i'm sure most of us uh, i am i am running my passion for last 2 3 years helping students seeing them successful so ultimately i know that you will also get successful you will follow your passion just do the right thing do it passionately and with lot of perseverance and with lot of empathy about your stakeholders that's what i will request you thank you very much sapta and devashish really great to connect and thank you it's awesome i mean this is the fact these are the things which you'll never get anywhere so i really thank you for that and we will be so my apologies to some people who could not join because i think link got circulated or something happened and you know we hit the 100 mark but i have uh, personally talked to everyone and uh, assured them that we'll be sending them the recording we'll be resolving your queries and you guys also if you have any doubt Please do let us know. Write to us, call us, ping us anywhere. We will do our best to help you guys. I know it's a huge investment for your from your side also, and we are you know really really want to help you guys so that you can you can succeed. And uh, I know that a lot of you will become a mentor you know in future to help other guys. So that's what our expectation from you as well. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, and I'll be signing off. And thanks, Sapta, Vasheet, and everyone. for joining this session thank you very much thank you very much thank you take care guys bye bye thank you thank you thank you